Happy 420, everyone. My name is Josh Werzer. I'm the president and a co-founder at SC Laboratories. We're a network of analytical testing laboratories up and down the West Coast that specializes in cannabis. And I'm joined today by my partner, Alec Dixon. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy 420. It's a great honor to be part of this uh, high, high stream 420 festival. Thank you very much for all that put on, everyone that put on this event. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing our presentation on one of our most near and dear subjects um, to our hearts and our noses, cannabis and terpenes. Um, and we'll be going through an olfactory odyssey. Uh, in this presentation, we'll be covering everything from the most basic on what are terpenes and essential oils, kind of getting into cannabis terpenes and the entourage effect, primary terpenes found in modern day cannabis. And we'll be then getting into cannabis uh, chemometrics and how everything sorts and also how terpenes play a role in quality. So the first question is, what are terpenes? Terpenes are organic compounds. They're usually aromatic and in, they provide most plants with their flavor and aroma. So um, chances are though, if you haven't heard of terpenes, you've heard of essential oils. And essential oils are the extracted essence of a plant's fragrance. And the predominant constituents of most essential oils are going to be terpenes. Um, cannabis is a really exciting plant because it produces a rich concentration of essential oils and, in, and it can produce a wide variety of different terpenes depending on the variety. So you can, that's why you can have one plant that um, tastes like grapes and the next one tastes like um, sherbet. And so um, probably the most famous constituent or the, the one you're most familiar with of, of the cannabis essential oils are the cannabinoids um, and, and THC being the most predominant of those. Um, cannabinoids are actually essential oils themselves. They're just specialized essential oil or specialized terpenes that, that cannabis produces uniquely. Um, and so what we're doing as, as extractors, cannabis breeders, growers, is we're trying to optimize and, and, and maximize um, the production and, and the extraction of these essential oils and terpenes. Um, here we're looking at, at a, a bunch of different plants or essential oils you may be familiar with, um, eucalyptus, lavender, peppermint, tea tree, all essential oils that, that you probably have some experience with. And when you look at them, the major constituents of each of these essential oils are terpenes as well. And most of these terpenes are actually um, the same ones you'll find in, in, in different varieties of cannabis. Um, so, so, you know, why is this important and, and how does it relate to kind of how we've always looked at cannabis? Well, chances are, if you have a, even a passing relationship with cannabis, you've heard of the terms sativa and indica. Now, these terms came about mostly to describe the cannabis plants themselves. Um, indicas are short, squatty, um, very densely um, foliated um, plants, whereas sativas tend to be long, taller, um, more sparsely um, populated with vegetation and, and, and cannabis flowers. Um, and, and, and so, um, you know, that's where it started. And what we realized early on is that indica plants tended to make you more sedated. Sativa plants tended to be more uplifting and energizing. Well, over time, we've bred cannabis plants, we've bred indicas into sativas, where pretty much everything in the market now is, is a hybrid of, of one type or another. And, and these, these sort of um, you know, morphology descriptors don't work so well anymore to actually describe the effect you're going to get from that cannabis when you consume it. So we had to come up with a different way of describing cannabis. And, 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 and what we think the most you know, uh, uh, um, preferred way to do that would be to describe can, cannabis based on its chemotype. And what a chemotype is, 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 a, is, is a, a type or a variety of plant defined by its chemical constituents. Uh, certainly the cannabinoids would be one of the most important constituents as far as your, the effects on the users. But then beyond that, terpenes and flavonoids are, are, are where we really are able to differentiate different plants based on their flavor, their aroma, and potentially even the effect they're gonna have on the user. Um, and so, why is this important? Well, um, it, it, first of all, of all of the dozens of, of terpenes we test for at the lab, we really only see nine to 10 in significant concentrations in the plants. Um, usually if you have cannabis in front of you, there's a 99, greater than 99% chance it's gonna be dominant in one of these five terpenes, myrcene, lemonine, terpinaline, pinene, or caryophylline. Uh, it's also potentially will have significant amounts of, of either linalool, humulene, osamine, and or pinene. Um, but these are the terpenes that are going to that are going to compose the majority of of that essential oil from the cannabis. Certainly, there's going to be other terpenes there present in much smaller amounts, and maybe they contribute to the effect and the flavor. But 
for this presentation, we're just going to focus on, on these, these chirpings that show up in significant quantities. Uh, so how does this play out? And, 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 and how does this, um, you know, what, what, what is sort of the distribution we see at the lab and what special insights do we get from, from all the data we get to see coming through the laboratory? And I'll, I'll turn it over to Alec here and let him explain the different classifications and, and kind of how you can optimize for chirpings. Thank you very much. And yeah, with our time remaining today, um, I look forward to sharing essentially a, a big data project that we've engaged in, you know, over the last 10 years, uh, since we launched terpene testing back in 2014. Um, we've performed over 100 plus thousand terpene tests. And um, we started working with some data scientists and bioinformaticists to help us cluster the data to see how things based on similar smell profile grouped similar and dissimilar to other strains. And so kind of um, essentially what we've saw, what we've seen is that, you know, we've, we've created this algorithm that with, you know, about 99% predictability, you know, we've seen uh, essentially that every strain we've ever tested sorts into essentially one of five primary smell groups. Um, and so kind of, you know, kind of jumping into the first primary smell grouping, which represents about 43% of the overall data of everything we've ever tested, you know, a lot of mercing, you know, there's a lot of mercing from what we see in, in uh, kind of the terpene data for myrcene. Um, so, so a lot of the typical profiles that kind of are in this group or there's, uh, there's a myrcene carry offering like you're looking at in this chart, that's all the purple. So GDP, grape ape, granddaddy purple, um, you know, purple FX. Uh, and, and if you see a little bit less carry offering and a little bit of pinene, that makes all the blue dreams. If both of those are a little low and it's just super primary uh, uh, myrcene, then that's all the tangies, Agent O, Orange Calio, Forbidden Fruit, et cetera, et cetera. And that takes us to our next group. So um, so, so our next group is the limonene beta carophylline kind of so, somewhat co-dominant group. Uh, from this group, what we see is, um, you know, kind of essentially it represents to us, so, you know, one of the, the greatest examples of a hybrid class. Because you know, on one side of the spectrum you have myrcene sedation. On the other side of the spectrum you have uh, like terpeniline, which is stimulation and cerebral uplifting. Um, and those gla classes are defined by one primary terpene, pr pretty much. Um, and going back to kind of the the, the hybrids, so the limonene caryophylline class. You know, as you can see here, it really is kind of two, oftentimes three terpenes co-dominant that define. The, the the experience so the strains that fall in here are everything from the the gas smell you know with all the og cam sour d gorilla glue etc you know also everything in this new world of uh the dessert smells you know like all you know from girl scout cookies sherbet gelato you know to all the new sunday drivers skittles er, you know everything in that realm kind of you see in a very similar kind of co-dominant path as this you know carry offlings relaxing limonene's uh, antidepressant and uplifting. So it seems to be a pretty strong uh, hybrid. This represents about 37% of our data. Um, and then kind of this, that then shifts us into the terpenaline group again. So terpenaline, you know, as you can see is primary terpenaline, very low to no, you know, very low every other secondary or tertiary terpene um, uh, in relation. But this is the, the, the realm of what has so often been described as sativa, you know, stimulation, uplifting, kind of cerebral. And so, so this is all the th strains like Jack, Trainwreck, Sage, Durbin, you know, all the classic haze. And from there, kind of, uh, it shifts into the, the pining dominant class, which represents about 6% of our data. So it's the smallest overall data set. Um, and it's got a lot of various obscure names kind of from um, strawberry fizz to kind of, uh, you know, certain recessive uh, blue dream phenotypes that you know, are dominant and pinene absent and myrcene. But, you know, in the last, you know, minute we have, you know, I'd love to shift back into a conversation with Josh and I to really uh, begin to start kind of talking about um, quality, you know, terpenes from everything we've seen in the lab um, has, has shown to, you know, kind of from the time you harvest, even when drying, curing in the most perfect ideal conditions, you know, we still see, you know, about 60 to 80% loss, you know, so kind of with that, you know, that level of loss and, and rapid degradation of terpenes, you know, it only seems uh, to us as to be one of the primary ways to re really begin to understand and judge quality, how well something was grown, dried, cured, preserved, and to, to have the conclusion of let Josh kind of share, you know, some of his final thoughts and words on it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, for me, the, the, the real mistake the laboratories have made is, is, is when we came about and started testing for THC, it became, 
uh, an arms race for the highest THC percentage. And I think for me as a consumer of cannabis, um, what's most important to me is the chirping content and in and, and the uniqueness and in, in, in the variety and flavors and aroma and effect. And so, um, you know, I just really like to, to urge everyone to maybe look beyond THC and, and start looking at chirpings as, as, as a quality indicator for cannabis. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great 420. Thank you.